asked me, let's say two years ago, if you could sell a luxury convertible all-wheel drive vehicle, I would have said probably not. But yet, this Range Rover Evoque is selling like hotcakes. In fact, the entire brand, both Land Rover, Range Rover, and Jaguar are up in sales. And coming up right now in the fast lane car, we're going to talk to the guy who is, well, in charge of that. It was pretty ballsy to build this because obviously Nissan tried it, right? An mm -hmm. all-wheel drive convertible, and they didn't do so well. And then you guys came along and chopped the top off an Evoque. Yeah. And how's it selling? It, it's selling great. Yeah. Uh, it went on sale uh, this past summer. I remember. Uh, the feedback from the retailers was so positive. There yeah. was a lot of interest. And what we actually did was we had to allocate the entire year's production uh, so dealers would have a, a greater view into their pipeline so they could give the information to the customers of when they can expect their cars. So right out of the gate, it's been extremely successful. Now there's three of these, right? There's a two-door, a four-door, and now the convertible. Uh, well, we uh, no longer offer the coupe version. Okay. So we have the five-door yeah. and the convertible. Why? wasn't selling people didn't like the coupe well you know we we didn't need that many uh derivatives yeah. so uh when we introduced the uh the convertible that was the gotcha. logical replacement to the coupe yeah 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 so uh first of all tell me what your job is for jaguar jaguar land rover so i i'm the product planning manager for jaguar land rover and sometimes i gotta pinch myself because uh it's been an incredible uh uh opportunity with all the new products that we're we're introducing so Coming off a, a year for Land Rover, sales were up 35%, making us the fastest growing luxury brand in 2015. And this year, uh, Jaguar sales are up 93%, uh, making us the fastest growing uh, luxury brand in the U.S. you, you got to so, love that. Your back boss back. has got to be happy. Yes, things are going well. <laughs> now, of course, a lot of that do is due to the fact that there's a huge demand out there for crossovers and SUVs. And so with Jaguar, yeah. you've got the new F-Pace, which is, I guess, pretty much sold out. Yeah, uh, that vehicle went on sale in mid-May. Uh, so far, year-to-date, we retailed 6,669 vehicles. Uh, it's, it's been a uh, great vehicle for us. And, and more importantly, it's bringing new customers into the dealership. So uh, for the first time, uh, Jaguar has expanded its lineup to five products uh, with the introduction of XE and F-Pace uh, most recently. So a whole new customer base is coming into showrooms. And I noticed that your new car that you introduced here the iPace was also a crossover. Yes, iPace, uh, you know, we revealed uh, the other night, very exciting, first battery electric uh, vehicle for uh, Jaguar Land, Ro Land Rover. Um, this vehicle features 400 horsepower, uh, delivering a zero to 60 time in about four seconds with a range of, uh, estimated range EPA, 220 miles. Yeah, that was confusing. Uh, during the press intro, you said 500 kilometers in Europe, but 220 miles in America, and obviously those two numbers, it doesn't, don't, they don't jive. Right. Why is that? Is it because of the testing procedures? It's the test cycles yeah. are different between the two, uh, two um, uh, government agencies. So the agencies. Europeans are a little bit more lenient. Yes. All right. Yes. So, yeah, we know that, I mean, you know, red-hot crossovers, red-hot SUVs, but where does that leave the sedans? Sedans, well, uh, XJ is really uh, coming off a refresh. Uh, we upgraded the electronics uh, in the vehicle. Uh, and, and hit on a couple of the uh, styling elements on the exterior. Uh, it's been a solid performer for us. Uh, XF, uh, again, an, another refresh. Uh, so um, that coupled with the all new XE, the sedan lineup is, is brand new. So uh, uh, keeping your fingers crossed that people still want the four door sedan. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, segment is down, but yeah. on the other side, we offer you know a, a, a lot of SUVs, especially with Land Rover. Uh, and we see all the SUV segments uh, with incredible growth. Yeah, I noticed so, that you're bringing in the Discovery now. Yes. The next generation. So uh, Discovery. Yeah. So if, if you look at the Land Rover brand, uh, overall positioning is above and beyond. Yep. We have three families under that. So we have the Range Rover family, which rarely represents refinement and luxury. Discovery family now is being further strengthened with the introduction of the new Discovery mm -hmm. to join the the Discovery Sport we currently offer. And then we have the Defender family. So most recently uh, with the Discovery, it's the LR4 replacement. The vehicle is about five inches longer than the LR4, about a half inch shorter, uh, but it offers full seating for seven, 795 percent uh, adults. So uh, a lot of versatility in that vehicle. And I noticed you've kind of separated Land Rover and Range Rover a little bit because the new Discovery has more of a traditional seating position, whereas the 
Um, Range Rover is still that kind of upright uh, that you've come to expect from the Range Rover. The two seem like, the, right. the, or maybe it's the rake of the windshield in the new Discovery. It's much, much greater. You don't feel like you're sitting on top of the car. You feel like you're sitting in the car. You're sitting in the car, but you still have a commanding view. And we, um, especially if you look at the cutaway, you'll see we have the stadium seating. Yeah. So as you go back in the rows, you go higher, each, higher. each row will elevate a little, giving each uh, person riding in the vehicle, no matter what position you're in, a, a excellent view of the road. Now I gotta ask, uh, you, you mentioned it, what's up with the Defender? Will there be a new Defender? Is there one coming? So the uh, Defender ended production this, yes, this summer. Yeah. Um, the company has announced there will be a replacement and uh, beyond that I really can't comment. All right, uh, and then the other question you have to ask is of course you just came out with an all-electric Jaguar. Will that electrification see its way into the Land Rover, Range Rover models? So uh, what we've said so far, is, as far as electrification, it's, it's very important to have a diversified portfolio. Yep. So uh, we offer diesels in the uh, Range Rover and Range Rover Sport, uh, six-cylinder, uh, as well as uh, six-cylinder gas and eight-cylinder engines. Uh, we're going to look at expanding that diversification with the inclusion of plug-in hybrids in the future. So there will be a plug-in hybrid in the, in the Range Rover Land Rover line? Exactly. All right. And... Uh, Obviously, you took a big gamble on diesels. Is that paying off? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, the fuel economy that we're getting on that car uh, is 29 miles per gallon on the highway. So very fuel efficient when considering the size of the vehicle. Yeah, it seems like diesels and crossovers or SUVs go together like peanut butter and jelly, right? Exactly. You want torque, mm -hmm. you want pulling power, mm -hmm. and so you get it with, with that. Right. And is that why you're offering one in the new Discovery? So we will offer a, uh, the six-cylinder diesel in the Discovery, and we are forecasting the, about the same model mix that we currently have on uh, Range Rover, which is about uh, 15%. Okay, All right. so it's not huge, but it's sizable. Yeah, you know, when you look at the customer driving habits, they, they vary, and that's why having a diversified portfolio to meet the needs of those different customers uh, is the best approach. So let me ask you the last final two questions. Uh, where do you see Jaguar five years from now, and the same thing for Land Rover Range Rover. Well, you know, if you look at the product cadence that we're introducing, uh, it's been incredible. So sales are up. Uh, we have the um, five uh, product lineup on the Jaguar side. So first time in 80 years we ever had uh, five products, and that's going to expand with the introduction of I-Pace as well as other models. So it couldn't be a better time to be associated with the brand uh, with all the uh, this, uh, uh, new models that are going to be coming. And this is selling. This one is, is, <laughs> is, my, is my love affair. Uh, at the push of a button, at speeds of up to uh, 30 miles an hour, drop the top and just have a great day. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's unusual. There's nothing else in the segment. You've got the whole We are the segment. segment. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and in terms of sales, how does this sell compared to uh, the five-door? So uh, this is about 10% of right. uh, the five-door or overall sales. That's and still very good. Yeah, it's yeah, great. And, and as I said, you know, it, it's, it's a small volume player, um, very exclusive. And um, that's why uh, we had to allocate the first model year uh, immediately uh, to give that longer view into uh, the production pipeline. All right, well, thank you very much. My Appreciate pleasure. Thank you for taking the time and chatting with me. I have to say, I really like this car. There's something about the fact that they were actually crazy enough to build it that makes me want to take it for a drive. Well, there you have it. There is kind of the future of Land Rover, Jaguar, and Range Rover. And of course, stay tuned for more videos from the Los Angeles Auto Show. And remember, you saw it first on the Fast Lane Car. As always, this is Roman saying thanks for watching and check out tflcar.com for more news views and real world convertible luxury Range Rover Evoke reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.